Many people who start out with chickens begin with chicks rather than full-grown birds. Ordering a batch of baby birds from a hatchery or picking them up from the feed store is a great way to get introduced to chickens. You'll both grow up together. Now chicks don't need that much to start out with since they're so small, but there's a few extra things to keep in mind as you raise them to productive adulthood. One of the most important things of keeping chicks is housing them carefully. So let's talk about four important aspects to consider for chick housing as you take that box of fluffy cuteness and welcome them home. The first thing is warmth. Chicks are fluffy with down feathers that capture body heat and keep them warm. You may notice, however, that chicks totally lack any of the hard outer feathers of an adult bird. Adult birds' plumages can shed water to a point and give them a bit of windproofing, all the while holding onto their body heat. But without that protective outer layer, chicks can easily be chilled by wind and soaked by water. Chicks need you to create a safe, draft-free structure that allows them to hold onto their body heat without it being blown away. Another thing that a chick shelter needs is safety. It almost goes without saying that pretty much any meat-eating predator would find a chick a delicious snack. Chicks have absolutely no defense. Your chick shelter, therefore, must offer them security from carnivores. Even the family cat or dog, no matter how friendly they are to people, can be a threat to them. Your chick shelter needs to be more of a fortress than the chicken coop proper. You also need to keep the chicks safe from each other. If your chick shelter has 90 degree angles, corners that is, chicks could actually pile up in the corners at night and smother whoever got shuffled to the bottom. Make temporary curves in any corner by padding it with straw or cutting strips of cardboard and curving them in the corners. After the first few weeks, when the chicks are bigger and stronger, you'll be able to remove these. This is one of the many reasons nests are round. There's no corners to get stuck in. The third thing that a chick shelter needs to be is dry. Newborn chicks are not great at preening, and they don't know how to not stand in the rain. You need to keep them safe by keeping them dry. If you use a chick tractor, try to position it in the sun or on a southern slope so that the morning dew dries fast. And if you ever find that your chicks get soaked for whatever reason, get them dry and warm as soon as possible. Bringing them inside and gently drying them with a hairdryer on a low setting can sometimes make the difference between life and death. Once those chicks get bigger and start growing harder outer feathers and developing a little bit of sense, this won't be an issue. The fourth thing a chick shelter needs is to be clean. Chicks poop a lot as they grow. Their shelter needs to be kept clean so that they can grow healthy and stay dry. Even if they have a small shelter, make sure that it's easy to clean so you always remember to clean it promptly. Now, if your chick shelter assures these four important keys as much as possible, you'll be well on your way to watching your chicks grow to adulthood. So let's talk about some different ways to house chicks that put those ideas into play. Now, the absolute best shelter that assures these four keys without fail is a mother hen. She keeps them guarded, gathers them under her wings at the slightest threat, keeps her chicks warm, dry, safe, and clean 24-7 off-grid. The chicks that I've raised naturally through a hen have never had struggles with poo-pasted butts, and they've always been as warm as they were in an egg when they're hidden underneath their mother's feathers. Now that I have a mature breeding flock, this is how I much prefer to raise my chicks. Now obviously, not all of us have an obliging mother hen to care for our chicks, especially if you're in your first year and are just starting out with hatchlings. If you are raising chicks, however, you have to think like that mother hen to keep them sheltered, safe, warm, and dry, and to give them their best chance. Many people opt for a brooder box with a heat lamp. This can be as simple as an augmented dog cage or as complicated as you want it to be. These can be kept in the house or in the barn, but you have to be careful with those heat lamps. They are a legitimate fire risk, particularly when they're not in your direct sight for a long amount of time. Another option for people just starting out is to turn the bottom of the coop into a temporary nursery. Keep in mind, this works if you don't have any other adult chickens in there. A big thing to remember is that the chicks will not roost until they're adults, so you have to pay close attention to where those chicks sleep at night on the floor. Make sure that predators can't tunnel under the walls, and again, watch out for chick piles at the, at the corners. The same warnings apply to heat lamps in the coop as well. Now, another option that we've used on our homestead is a mobile chick tractor. I've had great success with a chick tractor that we specifically designed for raising chicks until they're big enough to join the flock of adults. The chicks always get to run around on fresh ground, catch bugs, and eat all the greens they could want, in addition to the feed that I give them. Now, the chick tractor is off-grid, so there's no heating element. Even so, there's a couple of ways that we keep chicks warm. First, we get them after the last frost date. Within reason, chicks can be surprisingly adaptable to the temperature if they're actually allowed to feel it and adjust accordingly. In a big enough group, protected from the wind and insulated with lots of soft bedding, sometimes I even throw a layer of duck down on top of the straw, 
they can help keep each other warm through the night. If there's an unseasonably cold spring night that dips past the 40s, chicks can be collected in a lined covered box and brought inside until the next morning. There have been some years where I've never had to bring the chicks in and others have had to do it for just three or four nights. We also always position our chick tractor on a southern slope and seal it at night to block any drafts. Now, however you decide to do it, getting your first batch of chicks and watching them grow under your care is an absolute delight. Hopefully this lesson helped you feel a little bit more equipped to start planning their shelter and giving your chicks a great start.